Hi, this is Peter Cannon, photographer here again from Cannon Digital. Um, another tutorial here I want to do today is showing you how I uh, produce the photo on the right here from the photo on the left. So this was on a uh, film shoot, a feature film called Red, White and Bluey. Uh, I do a bit of uh, cinematography and f director of photography work on independent feature films, short films and music videos here in Melbourne and, and New Zealand. And um, yeah, so this was a photo we took on location when we were filming one day uh, at the local uh, aviation museum where they are uh, re constructing effectively a B-24 Liberator aircraft which is from the Second World War. So the Aviation Museum in Werribee is where that is. They were very kind in allowing us to use some of the original old uh, uniforms from the Second World War as well. And so uh, as far as I understand the headgear here is, is the original stuff. I think the costume he's wearing is not. It's um, it's a, a different, a more recently made costume. But um, so let's get into this tutorial on how I created this. It's it's fairly short and and quick, so I'll open this uh, in Photoshop because it was done in Photoshop and it was done with some other tools. So we'll just open that image first. We'll see it come in. So we're in a it's an Adobe Camera Raw. So in Adobe Camera Raw, um, we can do a lot of a lot of our uh, adjustments that we that we want just to get it closer to where we want to go. So if I look at the shadows and lifting the shadows a wee bit, we'll um, you'll see it quite quite subtle. Overall lightness up a wee bit. Probably bump the contrast up a wee bit. Um, we're probably pretty good there. I'll, I'll drop the clarity up a wee bit too, and that brings a bit of definition into it. Um, so we'll open it at that. One of my background photos there is another local Werribee in Victoria, Australia. A beautiful place there. Right, so we've got this photo up now. Now, for the purpose of the tutorial, I'll just resize the photo so it's not too big uh, for the computer to move it around reasonably fast so I'm not held up too much. So we'll make it an 8x12. Um, now I can drop that back up um, to that sort of size. I won't worry about doing any cropping, I think. I th I think I might have cropped very slightly in it before. Um, maybe I will. We'll go to the cropping tool there. And once I click on that cropping tool, I click on the picture, it gives me these uh, this grid across here, which just helps me to look at vertical and horizontal lines. And obviously it's got the um, rule of thirds going on there. So uh, I probably brought it down a wee bit. In height, um, I didn't want to cut that tube off at the right hand side there, um, so I'll just toggle that across a wee bit, leave a bit of that detail on the left in there. So I'll just do a little crop there, okay? So um, we could look at color balance here, but because I actually desaturated this quite a bit, I probably don't need to for the purpose of this. There was a, a bit of software I used um, which. Uh, was a Topaz plug-in effect, uh, Topaz black and white effects is what I used. Now I've got the Topaz Labs um, Photoshop bundle which is a really cool set of filters for Photoshop. I, I find it really handy for all sorts of stuff. So we were sort of trying to create a bit of a, a World War II sort of poster effect with this photo. And um, yeah, we'll just let this come up and I'll show you what uh, we ended up doing. It's taking a wee bit longer than normal to open up. Paper is going to open up okay. We've dropped the size down. What's going on there? Yeah, so we were trying to create a sort of a World War II um, po old poster effect, so therefore we didn't want to have too much richness of colour there. We didn't want the saturation to be too high. Um, he looks quite modern and new there, so we really wanted to. Um, drop those colours off a wee bit. You can see what you know the filter that's come up there, this was just the last one we used when we were playing around the other day. So if I go into the stylized collection here and then go to adaptive diffusion with colour, it's just creating the previews at the moment, so I'll just have to wait a moment while it creates all its previews for the various options down the left hand side here. You can see there that there's a 
quite a range of filters available to us in this program. Um, and on the right hand side here, uh, when we've selected a, a style from the left hand side, if you like, we can then go into these four options over here and, and just fine tune the, the image um, to suit what we want to do. So it's just taking a minute to do all its um, bits and pieces there. So if I click Adaptive Diffuse, Adaptive Diffusion with Color, you can see there pretty much straight away I've got the sort of look that I was after already just with that one filter. Um, so without doing too much adjusting in here, I think I'll just go OK to this because I always prefer to go into Photoshop to do my final sort of um, fine tuning. So you can see there we've got um, pretty, mu pretty much what we were after. Uh, I'll go into color saturation here and probably just lift the saturation a wee bit to bring a wee bit of color back into it just to get that green to pop a wee bit more. Um, I'll probably bring the darkness down a wee bit, just make it a wee bit more moody. Um, getting back to something close to what we want there. I'll bring that saturation back a wee bit. Um, you can see there we're pretty much done already just from that filter. So uh, this is the beauty of these sorts of filters is that they can do a lot of... I mean I could have achieved that look by doing a number of other things in Photoshop, such as reducing the saturation and um, pulling the contrast up a wee bit, um, and, and still have achieved it with softening and so forth. But just that one filter has pretty much got me to where I wanted to to go. Anyway, we're probably pretty close to it there, just with a wee bit of lightness and darkness adjustment, and there we have it. Really, um, we're back to from that one filter and Topaz Adjust. We've achieved that uh, old Second World War sort of look, um, slightly softened. Um, yeah, just quite a quite a neat sort of Second World War poster effect. So that was pretty easy and painless, wasn't it? Um, we'll uh, we'll call that quits at that, and and there we are for today on that very short tutorial on how to create that Second World War poster effect. Thanks for watching.